Hey everyone and welcome to today's Take Heart. We're in the last of a little series we've been doing looking at the way the Gospel writers introduce us to Jesus. I imagine John in his old age kind of sitting on the island of Patmos which is where he was exiled thinking how am I going to start my Gospel? How shall I introduce everyone to my friend Jesus? And then it hit him and he dipped his quill in the ink and he scratched out some words on a bit of parchment. And each of the gospel writers, they start a little bit earlier than the one before. So Mark, who wrote his gospel first, we think, starts not with the birth of Jesus, but with Jesus as a 30 year old man. Then Matthew goes slightly earlier than Mark and he starts with the birth of Jesus and the Magi turning up. And then Luke goes a little bit earlier than Matthew. He starts with the birth of John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin. And then he goes on to talk about the birth of Jesus. John goes a tiny bit earlier than Luke and he starts at the beginning of all time. And so those words that he scratched out on the parchment all those years ago were this, in the beginning. And when he wrote that, he was deliberately echoing the start of the Bible, Genesis chapter one, verse one, in the beginning. Of course, Genesis one, verse one says, in the beginning, God. And John says, in the beginning was the word. And I imagine, you know, we've been comparing the gospel writers to kind of film directors. There's the same Jesus and it's the same story, but of course a different director shows us a different angle on the person at the heart of the story. And if John was directing a film today, it would have to be something like Star Wars. You know, the way Star Wars begins, I don't know if you've seen the films, but it's this kind of like epic picture of the universe and then this white this yellow writing comes on the screen and there's this unbelievable da, 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 and it goes into a in a galaxy far far away it's kind of that's how i feel like john chapter one reads to me at least in my own head let me read a little bit to you now it says this in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it sets this cosmic scene for us he was with god in the beginning through him all things were made. So Genesis 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And John says, in the beginning was the word and through him everything was made. And he underlines the point because then he says, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Then verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The way that Eugene Peterson puts that is he says the word moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> it's like God, the, you know, the God of heaven and earth who made everything just moves in down the road from you. That's what he's saying. That's what John is saying. That's an introduction to the person of Jesus. And I find it crazy sometimes, I'll, I'll watch documentaries about the universe. It always blows my mind, like you realise just how small we are and how big the universe is. So I, I saw this one that was talking about the sun and it's just, you know, the sun's lovely and we go and sit in the garden in the sunshine and stuff like that. But it was talking about how it's actually this giant thermonuclear reactor, you know, and it said it would take all of the wealth of America over a period of seven million years just to be able to afford to power the amount of energy the sun produces in a single second. If a plane travelled at 500 miles an hour from the surface of the sun, it would take it a month to get to the core of the sun. That's how big the sun is. Put another way, uh, you could fit, you know, think of planet Earth and how big the Earth is. You could fit a million planet Earths inside the sun. The sun, we're told, is an average size star in a universe of hundreds of billions of stars. It's just an average size one. Um, scientists have worked out that there are more uh, stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on the Earth. Think about that. That's crazy. It's like all the beaches we've ever walked on, all the ocean floors, like all the sandcastles you've ever built. There's more stars in the universe than grains of sand on the earth. And we just read that the one who made it all became a little baby. So it says in Psalm 33 verse 6, 
By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. But the one who breathed the stars, those giant thermonuclear reactors, into existence also breathed those quiet, shallow breaths that a newborn baby does. I start each day with my little boy, Zachary, who's just seven months old. Every night before I go to sleep, I give him his kind of final feed. And in those quiet moments where I'm holding him, listening to him breathing, I just imagine, you know, Mary and how crazy it must have been for her to hold the Son of God in her arms. Now, I don't know if she's thinking the kind of stuff we're thinking now, but just the wonder of it and the glory of it and the, the mystery of it to be cradling the word made flesh. Isaiah talks about how God measures the, the starry heavens by the span of his hand. And we can think about how the little, you know, a little baby's hand grabs Mary's thumb. C.S. Lewis said that there was something born in that stable bigger than the whole world. Wow. What's the practical application of this? I think it's just to marvel at him and to wonder at him and to worship him and to delight in him again and to enjoy uh, this wonderful mystery that we're invited into that he wants to have relationship with us. I mean, it's staggering that we get to sit down and have breakfast with the glory of God, you know, and just have a chat with him over some Weetabix or, or go for a run and just worship him as we're running or sit in the stillness and know that he wants to be with us or ask him for help. I know that he wants to help us. The reason we know that we can do all of those things is because he loves us. The reason we know he loves us is because he became one of us. The word became flesh. This is our Jesus.